it's a Monday again. And um probably gonna get hell for this, but Tara, has anyone ever propositioned you with a horse? Um no. I I I think this I is, mean in what context? Oh, this is the freaking night with night and wackadoo. They call him apartheid Clyde, and I love that. Um he, he his is propositioning so I it's the first time I've ever heard of, of, of trading sex for horses. I'm sure we used to do that way back in the in like the, the yeah. 1800s and oh, la, la. but we've progressed. You would think a car manufacturer would know we don't quite use those anymore, but did what Elon? You didn't hear about this? No. How did you miss this, Tara? Okay, so I mean, I slept half the day because my head's being stupid. Okay, so in 2016, uh, Elon Musk sexually propositioned one of the uh, attendants on the SpaceX flights, and uh, offered, right. yeah, offered her if if she would touch his wee wee, he would he would give her a horse. And she said no. Yeah, I know. It's not even a good investment because horses cost so much money to maintain. Yeah, and and the dumb night just just to put a cherry on top, paid her out two hundred fifty thousand dollars for her sexual harassment claim out of SpaceX money. So they've got they've got a paper trail. And Ooh, la, la. This is this is our real life Tony Stark. He's not. He's not. And the thing is. Tony Stark is night trash. I look forward to your comments. Yeah, Tony is. Stark is trash. And this guy still isn't the real life. Tony Everybody Stark. forgets that first that that first movie where they're flying out uh to to like night. Afghanistan, him and Rhodey, and he's got like a night. stripper pole and the night plane. And and this the yeah, everybody forgets that bit. He's he's kind of mm. yeah. It's that's oh, la, la. Because those women have nowhere to go. They're trapped in a tube with you. You're that's yeah. Anyway, um, how he has the love of his life, dry cleaning the outfits of his one night stands, uh, and then she marries him. Pepper, honey. I know, but consider it is Gwyneth Paltrow. So yeah, but you can't blame Pepper Potts for Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> That's not her. Like, you can't blame Rhodey because Terrence Howard played him one time. It's not his fault. <laughs> All right. Let's let's get the, the intro rolling because we have other horrible things that have happened in the world this week. Let's go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible things. Bring back your film segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong. And uh, from the department of it happened again. <laughs> this one's actually not so terrible. I I, I love this. I, I I love whatever this happens because they, these kids become my heroes. Um, you've got to watch your kids. You've got to lock your phone. Toddler, <laughs> a toddler ordered thirty one cheeseburgers with his mom phone. He left. Tortash a great tip. <laughs> and just the picture of him. <laughs> that is that is victory. That is savoring the moment. Because holy shit. The kid who knows he got away with some shit. Yes. Um a toddler from Texas can cross order a pile of cheese bucket cheeseburgers off his bucket list after apparently using his mom phone. To place a McDonald's order on DoorDash. Uh, Kelsey Burkhardt Golden said she uh, received a mysterious DoorDash delivery of 31 cheeseburgers last week after her two year old son dropped the Barrett, dropped the order in secret. The boy dropped $61.58 in the McDonald's order and he also left a $16 tip. Uh, Burkhardt Golden said she was working on her computer and didn't realize her son had unlocked her phone until it was too late. She then received a message from DoorDash saying that due to the size of her order, it was going to take a little longer than usual. 
He usually likes to take pictures of himself, she said. I thought I'd lock the phone, but apparently I didn't because then came DoorDash with 31 cheeseburgers. Her culture was a little stunned by the delivery, but she did what any modern day mom would do after it arrived. Took a photo of her kid with his haul for Facebook. Obviously. Uh, Kids are so fucking smart now. Two years old. Two. And not only can he work your phone, but he knows what DoorDash is and how to order from it. Well, you know, it's got pictures on it, right? Is it's got the, the picture of McDonald's on the DoorDash and then a picture of a cheeseburger. And he just kept hitting the picture of the cheeseburger. Yeah, but then he had to go through the cart and the place order. Like, we're still on the spinning True. thing with like, what does the chicken say at two? Yes. <laughs> Kids are too fucking smart now. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the kid is still in diapers. <laughs> Kid is literally in a diaper in the picture. I love him. It's amazing. Because that that just what do you say to that? I mean, it's your t it's not like I mean, if it was like your 16 year old or some shit, you might be a little pissed off. Right. But it's a two year old. That's on you. Yeah. I'm Fixing loving it. Yes, he is in fact. <laughs> Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Brain, brain no grounded. calculate consequence yet. <laughs> brain only no cheeseburger. <laughs> she's she's going to have to like find a better way to lock the phone because now he knows that is the cheeseburger machine. You need to put a password on that fucker. <laughs> he gets in there just boop 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 boop. Why is it here yet? <laughs> Thirty-one cheeseburger. You know that DoorDasher was like, hey, it's a good tip. I don't know. Yeah. What the fuck? I don't care. Yeah. Or he probably thought Trump was. I town. ordered DoorDash at my job once and I ordered a pizza from the pizza place across the street. I just didn't have time to run out and walk across the street that day. <laughs> so like the dad and I gave my normal tip and the dasher arrived and I was like, I'm so sorry. Thank you. He's like, hey, this is my easiest delivery all day. <laughs> Like, I just, I couldn't get across the street to pick up my pizza. So thanks well, for walking that hundred feet for me. Well, after that, that wonderful bit of joy, let's descend into the madness. It is Florida. Um, we have seen many people use many techniques to attempt to evade law enforcement. I think this is the second time someone has used a reptile. I seem to remember this has happened before. Maybe was it an iguana before? I don't know, but it's a very Florida thing to do. I know we had a baby alligator with a bunch of drugs. Yeah, but I don't think that the alligator got hurled. Uh, a woman is accused no. of throwing a snake at a Florida deputy after leading authorities on a pursuit that ended in a crash. Deputies say the woman was arrested after she fled from a traffic stop that intentionally hit a MCSO motorcycle unit. Nobody was hurt, which is like seriously, everybody like Jesus Christ. Moments later, uh, the woman led deputies on a pursuit that ended after the woman hit another patrol car and a truck carrying three people. When the deputy approached the woman, she threw a snake at him. Now, I have questions. Snake? Yeah, I know, poor snake. Was this a prepared snake? <laughs> Did you have it just in case? Was this the I'm going to throw it at law enforcement snake? Was that what or were you just was there just a snake on the ground, a hapless bystander who got involved in your shenanigans? Which I because like, whoa, hey, I didn't sign up for this shit. I'm just looking for a mouse. Right. Seriously. <laughs> and I you have to wonder if how the deputy would fucking react. I don't I am. I am a dude. I'm a dude kind of dude. And even if even me, you threw a snake at me, I would make some very small child sounds. During the scene from The Mummy Returns, where Anax and Moon like throws the snake and Brendan Fraser like catches it and throws it back at her. <laughs> that I feel like most dudes wouldn't be the Brendan Fraser. No, I would I would I would be like on the level of a six year old in terms of reaction if someone threw a snake at me. 
That that seems about right. Cause... Yeah, nobody really expects a flying snake to the face. Really, right? And nobody should. That, you know, I'm I'm with you on that one. That Unless most... you're on one of those stupid survival shows where they're like, we're we're dumping these people in the most dangerous place on earth, naked for a month. Do you need ten grand that bad? Yes. I mean, you probably do, but there's easier ways you could win 10 grand eh. than spending a month in the Amazon naked. Eh. I don't think that's worth it personally. <sighs> All right. Um, or Florida. And this is from the Department of Chutzpah, which is a wonderful word. We get to use it way too often. here. <laughs> I, I hate everything he did, but Jesus Christ, you have to respect the fucking audacity of this motherfucker. <laughs> wow. Uh, Pinellas Beach's man created fake Trump pardon to try to escape charges. Oh, one published report says his company tried to take over properties that belong to Jeffrey Epstein. The man from Pinellas Beach has fabricated a fake pardon from former President Donald Trump as authorities investigated him in connection with a number of fraud cases. U.S. Attorney's Office in Tampa reported this week. Alexander uh, Lezinski, 22. 22. Is facing charges of wire fraud, bank fraud, and money laundering. He's being held without bail in Pinellas County. He face up to 30 years in prison. Uh... Is it Lesinski? It's it's Lesinski. That's a lot of consonants in it a is. row. It is. Two Z's. There's two Z's <laughs> in Lesinski. He's accused of using fictitious charitable entities, including one called Love and Bliss Incorporated, to take a number of to take part in a number of schemes. One fraud included applying for and receiving two payroll protection plan loans. And I gotta say, having done this show so much. And watching other news, don't you dare blame inflation on those fucking checks that got set out after so many motherfuckers straight up stole money from that payroll protection plan shit. Yeah. Like, they were just throwing that out. Like, this is one dude, $200,000. And it appears nobody was checking anything. No. Like, you could have applied and been like, yeah, I have an employee and it's really hard to pay her. <laughs> Give me money. I probably should have done that. That employee could have been greedy. True. I have to pay him in cat food and it's very expensive. Please give me $100,000. And they would have been like, okay. You laugh. His special cat food is like two fifty a can. Anyway. I had a cat on prescription food. It's fucking pricey. He was also involved in a check kiting scheme and tried to deposit $2.7 million in worthless checks into the Love and Bliss account. After launching the investigation, the government seized $337 from one of his accounts. When he discovered the money had been frozen, he attempted to have it released by producing a fabricated pardon purportedly signed by former President Donald Trump. Okay, first of all, that is not how that works. No. You see, to be pardoned, you got to get arrested, charged. You have to be, and before any of that happens, then you can get a pardon. But you can't have one waiting for you. That's not how that that works. And again, he hasn't been president for for two years. Right. So they, they, I mean, maybe you think he still is. Yeah. They, but that doesn't make his pardons finding. You can't preload even if they were real. Uh, the government said he was involved in another scheme in which he tried to deed himself more than 10 properties around the country that were valued more than $300 million. The real owners of the properties and their lawyers tried to correct the fraudulent deeds. Zinsky responded by sending harassing and threatening letters, emails, and faxes. So he had the audacity to say, that's mine. And they said, the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, fuck you. I'm coming for you. I'm like, what the fuck? Um work sometimes. It was trying to seize control of two properties that belonged to Jeffrey Epstein. Properties where Epstein since demolished mansion in Palm Beach and a ranch in New Mexico. 
Just what concerns me is Love and Bliss Inc. Yeah. was apparently a Christian nonprofit, and yep. that is not what that sounds like. No, it's not. It sounds it sounds a bit more like a like like a squishier. Yeah, like, like a different. It sounds like the of, kind of charity yeah. that raises money for dudes who can't afford to solicit a sex worker. Yeah, and the, the mugshot is like he's got this look on his face, like fucking, how dare you? I, I, how that, that is the how dare you look on his face if ever I seen one. Just, how dare that haircut, sir? I yeah, that is that is kind of a. Did you get run over with a weed whacker? Twenty two years old. I didn't have this kind. I, I gotta say, he's got Ooh. initiative. I didn't have this kind of hustle. At, you know, I mean, admittedly, he's completely breaking the law, but I didn't have this kind of motivation at twenty two. Seriously. My ass was just muddling. I have that kind of motivation now. My ass was still kind of muddling through fucking college and shit. I was out of college. I was working a shitty job at a little advertising firm. It didn't occur to me to steal property from rich felons. It, I mean, I kind of wish it would have. Right? Uh, all right. This is a nice twist on the old uh, 911 is not customer service because it that that is its own fucking category by now. Um how do you, you call 911 and then you're the problem is the thing here. She created a McMess. A Polk County woman arrested for calling 911 over McDonald's order. do this the ice cream machine is never gonna work just accept it yeah like mcdonald's like for real mcdonald's got scammed hardcore on those ice cream machines yeah the, the, you're not gonna get a mcflurry just accept it like we all have uh tianis jones 22 was arrested friday evening Polk county deputies say jones went too far over a mistake with her mcdonald's drive through order <coughs> A happy meal with a chocolate shake, a filet of fish sandwich, tea, and fries. Okay. Uh, according to the Polk County Sheriff's Grady Judd, something was wrong with her order, but we never find out what. So employees asked her to pull up to the third window and said, Judd said Jones parked and went into the Lakeland McDonald's. Surveillance video shows Jones becoming increasingly displeased with the service, despite workers offering to fix the issues as well as return her money. Okay, this is, uh, you got to the point. Where you're walking away with free food, effectively. They're fixing the order and they're giving you her money back just to make you go away. You've won. You won. You annoyed everybody into submission. Congrats. But no. Jones became, became so angry she called 911 to complain that McDonald's had gotten her order wrong. She ordered a chocolate shake and a fillet of fish, I and know. they were like, "Go to hell!" Yeah. You remember that song? Here's a quarter. Call someone who cares. Nine one one does not care about this. Mm -mm. That's but wait, there's more. That's when things went from bad to worse. Jones went behind the counter and started throwing things. She lifted the sleeve of cups and threw them at employees and into the dining room. Counter lasted 10 minutes, but the sheriff's office only released two minutes of the altercation. Joan's sister and mother were also there and tried to get her to leave. Um, they stayed behind after Jones left and were cooperating with the investigation. Um, so, yeah, she was arrested on burglary with assault, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, misuse of 911. So, you... Read the quote, though. I'm not. I'm not reading it. I hate that quote. It's terrible. God, I will read it. God damn it. I don't know what was wrong with her that night, Judd said. I don't know if she was too fried short of a Happy Meal, but she created a Mick mess and acted like a Mick nut. She ended up a Mick burglar. <laughs> too much. Too much. You should have stopped at the first one. Don't. Don't. Quit your day job. Wait, you're a cop. No, quit your day job. I just motherfuck. Okay. 
So this is escalate. First, you've already won. They're going to give you everything back. No, no. Let's involve the, the authority. Let's get 911 in here. So this is a whole new level now. But this is still the place to stop. Because after this, you have alerted authorities to what the f yeah. there's some shit going down, and then you are the shit going down. Once the cops, it's not the time to start committing vandalism and assault. Right. They're not going to be like, oh, it's okay. She's in the right here. She, she can make a fuck. Yeah, it's fine. No, that's not how that works. I mean, you didn't give her her filet of fish. What's she supposed to do? That's not how it's going to go. I don't understand. Man, I have gotten so many orders wrong at fast food. And you know what I've done? Like, if it's been like a big thing, like completely wrong order, I will stop and be like, excuse me, this is, I've got the receipt. This is wrong. Yeah. Could you please? And sometimes like they put like onions on my cheeseburger and I'm like, all right, I'll eat it. I don't care. It's, it's <laughs> like, I like I take like, 20 minutes out of my day to go back and get another fucking cheeseburger. I'll Usually I ask for no pickles. Sometimes I get pickles. You know what I do? I whine about it and I take them off. Take the pickles off. I don't call 911 and go on a fucking rampage. And wreck the place. No. Well, this one, I, to, let's escalate. I don't, I, the, what, what's driving me crazy about this one, this is from Wichita. I don't know why. There is no explanation as why this happened. This is just one of those events. This is going to fucking keep, it's going to keep me up at nights. This is kind of the shit that I'm sitting there going, why, why in the name of God? Wichita police identify poop trader who defecated in beauty supply store. Who gives a week? I don't, I don't do this. <laughs> Save it for Luke. This Luke. is this loose subgenre now. <sighs> the Wichita Police Department asked for the public's help to identify a woman who entered a Northeast Wichita beauty supply store and defecated in the middle of an aisle. They say the crime happened last Tuesday. Uh, the defecation. This is what. This is amazing. The defecation was significant enough that eight wigs were destroyed as a result. How much did you poop? Because I'm getting that picture of, you know, like Laura Dern and, and, and uh, fucking Malcolm. They, they got the fucking giant dinosaur poop. That's a lot of poop. That's what I'm thinking here. Like, how did you use them to wipe your butt? Oh, no, I, I didn't go there, but you went, God damn it. Or was there like a projectile situation? <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> like a mortar. It's like... Um, Do they just smell bad now? Uh, the business would like to know who the poop trader is so they can pursue criminal charges. It was captured on a video. With the good of all you, we're not posting the footage of the offending beagle assault. So, yeah, they, they've, they, they've got you dead to rights going in. And, why? Why did this happen? Why? Why in the name of what the what in the hell? What series of circumstances led up to this? Again, in our increasing late stage capitalism dystopia, a lot of stores will not let you use their bathroom if you don't buy a thing. Right. And that sucks. That's annoying. I mean, I get why, though, because I've worked in stores with the only public bathroom and it's a pain in the ass. But I understand that that is irritating. And when you got to go, you got to go. But this isn't the answer. Like, I think we've all been desperate. We've all been there. This, because this seems deliberate, obvious. This, this seems really fucking deliberate. Yeah. Like, number one, who raised you? Where is your mama? She's not happy. Um, two, I'm just, this has got me like, I'm like trying to go back to the instigating event. I want to know. Like, like who shot Archbishop Ferdinand to kick this shit off? You know <laughs> what happened that this, this was the only answer. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could trace it back to that specific <laughs> event? <laughs> like maybe she's a descendant 
of Archbishop Ferdinand and the generational trauma has just rolled. Lady Meanshaw says now she's that in some would be a show. Uh, Lady Meanshaw says she's in some serious shit. Or Archduke, Don't Archduke Ferdinand, whichever, Archbishop, Archduke, whatever the fuck, he's dead. We both said Archbishop. Yeah, we probably did. I posted a West Wing clip today and said that I always thought Martin Short was so good on that show. <laughs> and it took me a minute to figure out why everybody was sending me Ed Grimley gifts. And then I saw my typo and I was like, oh, she Sheen, Martin Sheen. I was only three letters off, but it makes a big difference. But they are both men. <laughs> so I was close. Uh, finally, this one, this one baffles me to no end. Okay, Tara. Just you're on the road, you're driving. Some asshole takes a shot at your car. What do you, like a, a gun. shot? A gun. Oh. What the fuck do you do? I freak the fuck out and probably try to drive away. Which is the normal sane response to someone pulling a gun and shooting at your car on the highway. This is the not normal response. Road Rage Victim says he followed Shooter home and was shot at again. This is what Dan would do. When someone fired a gun at a man's red Mustang, he said it felt like... It oh, well, you nowhere. didn't say it was a red Mustang. <laughs> That's different. I drive a Honda Fit. There's a big difference there. It was really random. I didn't even expect it. The victim who chose not to be identified. Uh, the fact he could have shot me... That wasn't gonna slide. He still had a gun. That was when he decided not to let the shooter get away. The victim said the incident started when someone fired his car after being with the set with how he tried to merge. Oh. I went to change lanes. The guy refused. He waved the gun. Then he shot it. He shouted at my car and he hit it. Shooting occurred, occurred near the Green Buyer. Green Briar Parkway off ramp. Um, the man had just dropped off his seven year old daughter before the bullet hit the right rear, uh, right above a rear tire. Now, okay, if the kid had still been in the car, yeah, that I might have gotten, but he said, he, Oh, I think if the kid had still been in the car, that's so much worse. Yeah, he says he quickly pulled up behind the shooter while on the phone to 911. That okay, that makes sense. Give him the and I promise you, 911 was like, absolutely fucking do not follow this person home, you psycho. Just read us the plate number and go about your day. Nope. I followed him. I just didn't think he was actually going to come to his house. I mean, that is pretty stupid. That was when the victim said the shooter went inside and got more guns to shoot at him again, but missed. He proceeded to go into the house, get an assault rifle. If I had to count, maybe three or four more shots. This guy was a stormtrooper. <laughs> or you could really be hurt. Police identified the man as Quincy Adam Rogers. Police say Rogers told them the man cut him off in traffic. He admitted to him that while the car was passing, he pointed his gun at the car. Um... Rogers admitted to the police that when the other driver followed him home, he went inside, retrieved more guns, and began shooting again. Now, here, here's, here's the part that, that is just completely infuriating here. The victim said he decided not to use his own gun and instead got the police involved. How generous of you. I could have shot him at that point, but now I'm in the back of that car as to whether I was right or wrong. Now I got to prove I was right. So it's not that that shooting him would have been a bad thing. It was getting away. Would have gotten trouble. Yeah, it was. So this is a novel without a hero. Yeah. This is that whole eight brain 
aggression bullshit. That's all this is. How dare you? I will make you pay. You, 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 he could, he is trying, he's shooting at you. You could be dead. This is something that Joe Rogan does to your brain. Because I, obviously, shooting at people on the highway is fucked up. But being the other like, guy explained it as though that, like, well, he cut me off. That does, that's, that's um, not, that's not a good, that's not a good. No. But. No. That's not a, that's not an excuse to go home and try to fuck him up. Mm-hmm. Because what what are you going to He's got a gun. Yeah. You have a gun. So you could have a shootout. And people could die. But that's not and, a great idea. That's not a great idea cuz you could die, he could die, other people could die. Bullets they aren't really discriminating. They just go in yeah. a line. Yeah. They don't really they don't really stop and ask, like, excuse me, are you involved in this? OK, I'll leave your kidney alone. They don't do that. They don't do that. Like, fucking hell, man. Get over. Oh, this is the first thing. Get the fuck over yourself is the first thing we learned. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Look, only victim in that story is the red Mustang. Like, I have learned very few things in my lifetime. But one of the things I have learned is. Going out of your way to try to prove shit. Proves absolutely nothing because no one gives a fuck. Like, we'll prove that you are an asshole. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, no, I'll show him everybody. Why? You're, you're never- probably not going to prove what you're trying to. Like, most confrontations I've had in my life, I've never seen that motherfucker again in my life. I couldn't even remember what the fuck they look like. They probably have no, they'll probably forgotten all the fuck about me. What the yeah. fuck? You gotta let some shit go. If you want life to be long, you just gotta let some shit go. Um, we have learned both men in desperate need of more fiber in their diet. Right. We have learned poop is not a plan. I haven't had to say that in so fucking long. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> they, I, I cannot think of a single set of circumstances. That justifies going into somebody's place of business and pooping. We've been for around about a decade. Yeah. And we have failed to come up with a scenario where poop is the solution. Now, I know some of you little pedantic kids are going to be like, well, what are, you're really constipated. Yeah, I, I'm talking a social situation. Nobody comes, nobody encounters poop and goes, oh, I understand now. I see your point of view now. I'm I get really it. sorry. I get it. You know, I, I wasn't I wasn't really seeing it from your side, but then you pooped on my floor and it's like the light went on. Now we learned if you're going to call 911, don't be the reason 911 needs to be there. Like, I don't know how she thought they would come in and take what were they gonna do? Come in and, and applaud? And then everybody said she was the prettiest woman. Um, <laughs> we've learned that you can't just. I mean, if you were going to go down anyway, at least go down swinging. If you got to come up with a, pres, a fake presidential pardon, fucking try it. Maybe it'll work. You don't know how stupid the cops are. People are stupid, right? <laughs> you never know. It's not going to work forever, but it might work long enough to get you over the state line. We learned a police pursuit is not improved by adding a snake. No. And uh, we, we, once again, you kind of watch your fucking kids because they are they are smarter than you think. They are way too smart. Like it's 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 like it's like the velociraptors in Jurassic Park with the door handle. For that's what kids are like now. Just another reason I have cats. Only like instead of that, it's like it's with your bank account. That's what they're going to yeah. murder. And your car. <laughs> they're not safe. I don't recommend them. 